said, we're the master gardeners of Amador County. Um, many of you are from other counties. Uh, if you are from another county, um, not in Amador County, you probably have a master gardeners in your county. If you're in Amador County, I have here the contact information, a phone and email, and uh, you can contact us with your gardening questions and we'll try to take a stab at answering them. If you're not in Amador County, you can find your local Master Gardener program by doing a web search for UCCE Master Gardener and your county name. That UCCE is University of California Cooperative Education. So search for that and your county, like there's a Sacramento Master Gardeners and a San Joaquin Master Gardeners and a Calaver or Calaveras and Tuolumne and so forth. Um, next slide, please. So today, uh, Dennis Miller will be giving a class on um, fruit tree and grape grafting. Uh, Dennis has been grafting trees for a long time and uh, he's given this presentation a number of times. Um, just last year, he gave it in person. And when we give the class in person, uh, there's a hands-on uh, where Dennis and uh, some of the other uh, grafting people will demonstrate. Unfortunately, there won't be any demonstration hands-on today. Um, look for us next year. And if you're close by to Amador County, um, come to our class for a hands-on demonstration. But today, Dennis is going to talk about it. And I think you'll learn a lot from that. So um, Dennis, please. OK. Uh... <clears throat> I like to, to do a kind of a pr preliminary thing before we do a hands-on. And again, we're not doing hands-on today, but I, I think it's important that you understand uh, all the, the different things we're going to be talking about. Grafting is the process of joining a part of one plant to another in a way that the two will unite and continue to grow as a single unit. This, the scion, that's the, the part that's being grafted, is a branch shoot or bud removed from one plant and grafted onto another. The scion remains true to its origin. So in other words, if I have a red delicious tree and I wanna graft a, um, say a yellow delicious to that tree, the scion of the yellow delicious will be yellow delicious and the plant growing or that the growth from that point will produce yellow delicious apples. So again, the shoot or the scion becomes uh, true to its origin regardless. I have some apple trees I have in my own yard with seven different varieties grafted onto the one tree. So I can have apples like Gravenstein, they come on early in the uh, uh, midsummer, all the way up through Arkansas blacks, which come, to, come up about uh, maybe December. So you get a variety of apples uh, over a period of time. Rootstock, and I want to say rootstock because that's the plant which the scion is attached. Now, the thing is, it might be rootstock, you may want to call it the host tree, because rootstock, if I'm making a new tree from scratch, I use rootstock and I graft a scion to that, and that scion becomes the new tree of that particular variety. If we want to call it the host tree, we're just going to get graft a scion to that host tree. And again, you can have multiple grafts of different varieties as long as it's, if it's apple to apple or pear to pear. We don't, even though there's seeds, we don't normally try to graft a pear to an apple tree or an apple to a pear tree. They'll take, and usually in about two to three years, they die back. They don't, they don't last. You can normally graft Pit to pit, that would be apricot, uh, peaches, plums, those you can graft between each other. You can, you can cross those without any problem at all. But when it comes to apples, any type of apple can be grafted to an apple tree. Any type of pear can be grafted to another pear tree. <clears throat> okay, so the candium layer, it's really important to understand, and that's the vascular cells located between the wood, that'd be the bark area, and the bark of the tree itself. And just underneath that scion, just underneath that bark area, 
it'll be green. And that's called the cadmium layer. It's kind of like the vascular system. It's like the artery uh, in your arm. Why graft? <clears throat> it combines traits like disease resistance and winter hardiness. So in other words, if you're up country, up in the higher altitude, you need particular trees that will take that kind of cold weather. And then what they do is they graft onto the rootstock to, to make a particular tree and a rootstock that will hold up in that kind of weather conditions. It also it's used to repair damaged trees. You might have a big windstorm and a, a break branches or your deer got into your trees and damaged trees. So now you can go back and graft in and repair those trees uh, and create new limbs using a graft. You can put new life into old trees. Uh, a lot of times a tree has got uh, dead limbs, especially a, a, an old orchard. You can wind up a derelict orchard. You can, you can cut back dead wood completely and come back and regraft. And sometimes you can create a, a, a very valid tree as far as uh, produces fruit where it wasn't producing before. Different variety of cyanobacteria become a pollinizer for the host tree. So for instance, with cherries, most cherries have to have a host or a, 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 a pollinizer for it as far as for the tree. Um, and that doesn't mean it has to, it can be the same tree as far as if say it's a black tart uh, or, or a uh, royal ann. You can't just take two royal ann trees side by side and have them graft or have them pollinize each other. You have to have a particular variety to work with that tree. So if you take and graft like my uh, cherry trees, I have three or four different varieties grafted into the tree, each tree to allow it to be self-pollinizing. So that's a, a way of creating a pollinizer without adding more trees, you're just adding grafts within a tree. Several variety of cyan will extend the harvest period. And again, I mentioned I have uh, one of my apple trees has got seven different varieties. So I'm getting apples in that particular tree from uh, around uh, early to mid-summer, up, right up until uh, early December. Tools for grafting. Now, you don't have to have all of these tools. These are just some of the different kinds of tools that are used within a variety of different types of grafts. One of the things you want to have is you want to have sharp tools to start with. Pruning shears, and I like bypass type shears. I like them to where one blade passes the other. It's a lot better than having a flat surface, an anvil, for instance, with the blade coming down on an anvil. Uh, and what it does is it kind of crushes the backside of your scion. So use a bypass, it can be pruning shear, a pruning saw, a sharp knife is very important, a cleaver, a hammer, screwdriver, some type of tape that can be plastic or vinyl, uh, so any type of tape, uh, even electrical tape will work. Wide rubber bands work, some type of sealer, and labels. And far as labels go, I like to use like aluminum can, like a beer can or a soda can, and just cut out a strip. And with a ballpoint pen, you can take and write with a ballpoint pen giving the variety that you're just you're grafting and what the date is on it. That gives you something that lasts forever. If you go in there with a uh, Sharpie or marker like that and you put it on within a year, that Sharpie has uh, faded out and you can't tell what was there. When dormant, that would be from usually from December to January, you wanna select one year old scion. And again, it'd be a, like a quarter to three quarters of an inch in diameter. <clears throat> I like to consider it like pencil size and up to three quarters of an inch. If you look on the left picture here, that's an apple. The new cyan is reddish. If you see where my arrow is, this is older wood. This is reddish. This is new cyan. This could be used as a cyan. That's good there. This is older wood here. There is a reddish one here. So it's one year old. That's this last year's wood. That's now that becomes a cyan. On a grape, the leaves that come off of it, and you can see what the grape looks like. You want to make sure and cut the ends, the tip end, that would be the far end of, of your, uh, especially the grapes, at an angle. 
And then I like to make these about 18 inches long and then you'll have a flat cut where it goes back toward the, uh, the, the base. The problem is if you turn this over, you don't know which side's up and you go to graph this, you, if you graph this in upside down, as far as the, uh, the, the chip here, it won't grow. So you, this allows you to know that you may have seven or eight or 10 buds on this grape scion. And if you've got this showing us up, as you cut these out, you'll know which end goes up as you go to attach it. This is showing apple scion and this is grape scion. We, I like to have them about 18 inches long, lay them on newspaper, roll them up tightly, wrap them in newspaper and label the variety. So here we have a, a pink lady apple. And this is a Thompson seedless grape. And then we're going to take, I'm going to wet it down, get them wet, place in a paper. Oh, I like to use bread bags because they're long enough. You get, you know, an 18-inch uh, piece will fit right into a bread bag. And then take, tighten it up, and then put it inside of a meat keeper. These will hold for three or four months that way. If you, if you cut these in, say, December or January, uh, you can still use them uh, three or four months later. The, in my area, I'm at the Pine Grove and we're at 2,600 feet. Uh, so the elevation is up pretty well. But you know, it's been a rather warm summer. It hasn't been that cold. We've had some cold days all of a sudden, but yeah, it's still uh, warm. And so my buds are starting to push right now. So you can actually take and graft today even. And you can graft from now up until, give it up into, uh, probably into um, April, even first part of May. Sign wood, graph from dormancy through early spring. And again, this would be right now, February at my altitude. But again, as long as the buds are starting to, just starting to push, they don't, you don't want them to have, uh, uh, start to be flowery or anything. All you want to do is have the buds just starting to swell. So from then up until about May. Scion should have two or three buds per graph, not more than three, for sure. It, it takes too much energy when you've got, say, six or eight buds on that. It takes too much energy to try to develop those six or eight buds. Maximum three. A whip graph, which is one of the graphs we're going to show you how to do. <clears throat> you need a scion and a grafting site exactly the same thickness. And I've I've made many thousands of graphs, so I can look at it and just visually look at it and know what size I need. But if you want to do it, especially as a novice, take a pair of uh, wrench like this, and that will give you a particular size, and then you'll have a scion that will be exactly the same size, perfectly. And it's important, especially on a whip graph. This is a, shows this is the, the rootstock, or this would be the host tree. This is cut off at about a 65 degree angle. And then what we'll do is come back in with a, a knife and we'll slice just above the center, just above it, come to slice down. Now this would be your scion, exactly the same size as far as thickness, 65 degree angle, just above this, toward this end. We'll cut just past the center and put a notch in it. And then these will slide together. And this is called a tongue whip graft. The tongue allows us to lock into place, allows you to wrap it. If you don't have the tongue, if you just have a flat surface, two flat surfaces together, it'll slide. You can't hold it together. So you need to have this tongue to hold it. Now you can use electrical tape. You can use grafting tape. There's all different things that you can use. If you use electrical tape, remember there's an important part. I would start the electrical tape and go maybe a one half inch sticky side down and then turn the tape completely upside down, reverse it. So as you're wrapping, the sticky side faces outward. So you wrap this all the way down to the bottom. Then you wanna take and put a sealer on it. And I will show you uh, sealers further, further down. Another type of graft is a bark graft, where if you have, you've cut this off, you've got a, a long, elongated cut here, 
and they have a slight notch on the back side. So you can see the notch here. Long on this side, a small notch here. And what we do is we take exactly this width and we take a, like a, a sheetrock knife or a grafting knife and make a slice down here. Okay, this is going to be exactly the width of that scion. And they're gonna shove this down into place. So you got cambium layer. Remember that green little thin layer is going to be touching this area here. And it's gonna to be touching all this area here. And that's what's gonna allow it to grow. If this is a larger piece of wood, you could actually put four grafts into it at once. And then this has to be wrapped really tight. A cleft graft, which is a really simple graft to do. Here you take a hammer and a cleaver, and you come in and in fact, this is exactly how I do when I start from rootstock only. I've got an M111 rootstock and I wanna put a, an apple graft onto that M111 rootstock. This is exactly how I do it. I'm gonna take and tap down on this and then you'll take a, a screwdriver and put a screwdriver down into the slot that you just made here. The screwdriver will keep it spread open. And now you're gonna take your, your scion wood, you know, slice like this, both sides, and leave one end longer. The long side is gonna be the outside right here. Okay, again, there, with the outside, this is the long side, this right here. See how that fits down perfect? You can actually put two of these scions in that one host and then wrap that tight. And you can see this is coming all the way down here, completely down at the bottom. Here, the long side is hit this side and the short side there. If you got that reversed, you're gonna wind up this st stopping here and you're gonna have an open spot and you'll get air in there. So we want this to come all the way down tight. And now you can put uh, either uh, grafting wax or I, I like to use a product called uh, Doc Farwell's uh, Wound Heal and Seal. We'll show it later. It's important that you put this on the ends here because you don't want air or moisture going in here. It'll dry out really quick if it's left open and you cover this and this whole thing. A bore graft. This works, I've had some success with this on small young trees before they get a rough bark. Once the bark gets really rough, I've not had good luck with it, but on young trees, especially a damaged young tree, this works pretty well. What you wanna do is measure your scion and then you wanna get a twist drill that fits exactly the same size as your scion was. And then you're gonna take and put a piece of tape about a half inch up to three quarters of an inch up from the end. Then you take your scion, lay it down right next to this and see where this ends and come out just a little bit shorter than this length here. Make a cut in here and just scrape this back with a knife. Just scrape it lightly. This color doesn't show up correctly. This should be more green. It should look just about the color of this slide. Look at the bottom of the slide. See this green at the bottom here? That's about the color it actually should be. This is a grafting knife. It's a very thin knife. It's very, very sharp. And the backside of it has a, a little spade. That is not sharp, but that spade is used in other types of grafts, which I will show you. So what we have now is a exact distance. It's a little bit shorter here than the end. Now we're gonna take, and we're gonna take the drill. I'm gonna to cut through into the host tree, right to the tape. So that's predetermined the length. Then we're gonna take our scion. This has got three buds on it and you turn your scion to where it's gonna be facing. You want the scions to face, the, you want the buds to face out and up. Push this into place and turn it a quarter of a turn. It'd be really tight. You want this to be really tight against the uh, cambium layer. You did a quarter turn so everything is facing the way you want it. And then we're gonna come in and we're gonna put a sewer on the ends. And I know as a master gardener, we're not supposed to advertise products, but I've been using this for many, many years, Doc Farwell Seal and Heal. It's available through Amazon. It's not cheap. They used to sell it in uh, pints and you can't, you can't find anybody carries it anymore. So it comes in quarts and it's not cheap. But if you buy like in the master gardens, I buy it, I buy the quart and I, 
I go down to a dollar store and I buy these little plastic containers with a lid and I can make half cup amounts in maybe 20 or 30 containers and I can resell those, uh, just divide the cost up between the 20 or 30 of them and it becomes very inexpensive. This will last forever as long as it doesn't freeze. If it freezes, it's done. So you've got to keep it out of, out of the, uh, it's got to be protected from, from being frozen. The key is that you have something, it's a latex that seals this off. It is water resistant and it's also, it keeps air from drying it out. It works very, very well. And I normally do this and I go back about 10 minutes later, check it to make sure there's no open areas. If there is, add a second layer on there. But this, even a year from now, that'll still have uh, the, just like that, it doesn't crack. That's one of the problems with using a, a uh, petroleum base, the black sealers. You put it down and a month later they're cracked. And when they crack, you get moisture and you also get uh, air in there and you may lose your graft. This is apple grass. This was taken in uh, April of 04. And this is a month, it's about, uh, it's probably five weeks later. Uh, let's see, and see this, this bright tape? This is where it was grafted and it comes all the way out this way. And all of these leaves came out of that scion in about five weeks. And here you can see where the, the I use a aluminum can and I've used a ballpoint pen to get the date and the variety on it. This is the bore graft you were showing just previously. You put this in, this is about five weeks later and see how it started to take off. And they, notice how smooth this is. The bark hasn't gotten rough yet. Once the, the tree matures and gets that really rough bark, I have not had a good, a good uh, response with it. What's happened here is I had deer got into my, my, my orchard and, and destroyed one side of a tree. And so I, I added, I created new limbs doing this technique. Another type of graft is called a bud graft. And this is the stick preparation for bud graft. This is after we've already got leaves. It would be probably, um, April, May, this would be later, rather than right now where we're just working with buds only. This already has leaves on it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, uh, again, it's a pencil size or a larger branch. I'm gonna cut these off, but leave a handle here. See the bud? This gives you a handle. So once you cut this bud out, you have something to hang on to. If you cut that off too, too close, you can't hang on to it. And again, we're gonna remove the leaves, but leave half of the stem as a handle. Two types of budding you can do with chips. One is called a T-bud. This would be the host limb here. We're gonna come in at 90 degrees, make a cut in, and then you can either come down and out, or you can come from here and go in and up. But you got the top is flat, the bottom is rounded. Then on the host tree, I'm sorry, I called this this was not the host, this is the scion. Okay, this is the scion here. Here is the host limb right here. What you do is you take and cut a 90 degree across this way and then take a slice straight down. And remember that grafting knife? I told you there's a little spade on the back side of that blade. The spade goes right in here and you slide down and slide down. That opens up an envelope and you slide this right into that envelope close it off and wrap it over. It's called a tea bud. And they do this with roses and uh, it can be used on a, a variety of different things. And again, this is taken from a leaf bud. Also is chip budding. And I, I do this for grapes especially. And I like this. All you do is you come in, a, you come up a quarter of an inch above the bud. And again, since this is grape, there's no leaf on here because the leaves are already gone. We're gonna come in a quarter of an inch above that bud, cut in and come all the way down, and then come a quarter of an inch from that and cut in at an angle. So there's this, oops, darn it. Okay, so what we have is we have a stop on this side. We'll come to the host and we're gonna make exactly the same cut. We're gonna come in just like that, come in and come all the way down and then come in and make this same slice this direction here. Then that fits right into place and then you wrap it. It's really easy to do. 
it, you, you, you think it's hard, but you know, if you sit down and do, say, just as an experiment, get yourself a branch, get yourself a piece of wood, and do 12 of these right in a row. And the first four or five are going to be miserable to work with. And after you get to the, about that 12th one, you start to get the feel of how to do it, you get the hang of it. I've, I've done, <laughs> actually, I've done thousands of these. So it's, to me, it's really simple. You know, they first, they say the first 10,000 are the hard ones. This is paragraphing. Uh, again, this was uh, March 04, and this is April. Again, it's about five weeks. You can see where the graft was made. This was the sign wood, and look at the size of these leaves in five weeks. It happens to be at that particular year, it really warmed up, really warm in uh, February and in early March. And these things just took off like a shot. I mean, that's, that's a huge amount of growth in five weeks. Here's another one over here. This is all new, all the new leaf. This is the sign wood. This is an Apache apricot. Again, we've grafted here. And again, it's, it's about five weeks. This is showing the, the uh, aluminum uh, can. We've got the, the variety on. Here's another one over here coming out this direction. And again, this is an Apache apricot. This is two years later. Now, when you plant a, an apricot tree, you don't expect to get full crops off of it for the first five years. This is the second year. Look at the size of those apricots. And that's a quarter. That's a big apricots. This is on a white peach tree. So we've got these ready to pick in June. And we've got peaches loaded in here, and they won't be ready till August on the same tree. So what I'm saying, when you got pit to pit, you, you can very safely do this on apricots, peaches, plums, pluots, stone to stone, pit to pit. Gravenstein and apple, uh, empire apple, this is an M111 rootstock. So in other words, I'm, I'm not taking an existing tree. I was taking M111 rootstock and I grafted onto this rootstock. Actually, I grafted onto where the branches were on the rootstock. What I do today, I don't normally graft like this anymore on, when I'm working rootstock. I like to cut the rootstock off about two inches above the ground. I like to come in and cut this off and do a cliff graft right here. And then that whole trunk becomes the new uh, scion graft, the whole thing. But anyhow, this, is, this has worked out fine. And so I've got this to where we got four, four in a wagon wheel shape, four different branches coming out. And this is three seasons later. I've kept this purposely short. This is three seasons later. This is still probably shorter than my pocket. This was done quite a number of years ago. Uh, we just got through picking, I, my, right now they're about waist high, they're about 10 years old, and I got a, a, a lug box of apples off these, these two trees, and they're only waist high, and they're not dwarf. These are full-size trees. Well, but, but let's put it this way, M111 Oostrock is semi-dwarf, but I've kept them short just by pruning them short. You can do top graft. Again, this can be done as a cleft graft. It can be done as a bark graft, especially when you have uh, like walnuts. So you got the black walnut, the rootstock on it. It's really hardy. And they do an English graft on top of it. Uh, English has got lousy roots as far as it, they just don't uh, do well. The black walnut is really hardy. So that's, that's options as far as a top graft. You could do sculpture grafts. If you come in and you're just taking and open up your limbs in, on both sides here, and then attach them with a, a tape or something. These will grow together. You can make sculpture grafting. I want to show some uh, great grafting we did. One of our master gardeners uh, had 40 plants, uh, 40 seven-year-old grapevines, and they weren't happy with the wine that we were making with it. They just didn't care for the particular variety, and they were going to rip them out. And I mentioned to him, I says, well, why rip them out? They're only seven years old. These are you know, they're really hardy. It took five years before you could start picking the grapes anyhow. 
So why don't we just do some graphing? So what they did here, we had we came in and we cut these things off. This would have been probably in, I'm, I'm gonna guess was it probably February, maybe March. See, they haven't started to leaf out yet. They cut these off here. And then once we cut these off, that's where it was cut off. This is all loose up here. We waited for, for a week before we did any grafting. These grapes push so much sap out. It, it will, if you tried to do a graft on there, it'll push the graft right out. It ain't one in stays. I waited a week, then we came back in. And here we are, it's a chip graft. Notice that this comes in, goes into place, push into place, and then we wrap that with tape. And one of our master gardeners is just taping these off. I was, I was making it a, the graft site, the scion, and then she's gonna take and tape this off. This shows how it's wrapped up tight. I've got a graft on the right and on the left on both sides. I have another gal over here, putting that uh, sealer, latex sealer around this completely. That would keep the air and moisture off of it. And we let these go two weeks later, look at the leaves coming out in two weeks. A month later, look at the leaves with it going here. And this, the leaves are coming out this other direction. And what I want to mention, I, I came back at this point at two weeks and I looked at, I found two out of the 40 vines that they grafted. Remember there's two grafts, each vine had two grafts, one on the right, one on the left. I found two of them that didn't look like they were doing really well. So what I did is I went down four inches below and I regrafted with new, new uh, sign buds and they took off. So we wound up 100%. Remember, it takes five years before you can pick grapes as far as actually pick a, a uh, commercially. This was 700 pounds of grapes two seasons later on the same vines. So I, I think that's really impressive. I was, I was really pleased with it. And I know the, the, uh, the people that own the vineyard were really pleased also. And they've been, uh, for the last two years now, they've been making wine off these. And I don't remember what the, what the variety is on these, but uh, they, it worked out very well for them. Key points for grafting. Don't leave cut surfaces exposed to sunlight or wind. If you, if you do this on a real windy day, uh, it's going to dry out too fast. You're better off doing your uh, grafting in the early morning before you got really hot, hot, bright sunlight or wind. Don't touch the cut surfaces. And I have to, I have to mention, I do one thing, and that is on, when I'm doing a chip graft, I do the chip. I actually put that chip in my mouth. And what it does, it keeps moisture to it so it can't dry out. Then I make my sight on the host plant then take it out of my mouth and put it into place. But don't take your fingers and touch your, the oil in your hand, touching that surface uh, on the uh, sign bud it can damage it. So don't, don't touch the back of it with your fingers. Candium layers of the sign and host must, have, uh, must uh, touch. Very, very important. If you don't get good contact with that uh, candium layer, it's not gonna work. Label each graft with a variety, name, and date. Keep your tools sharp. Again, I, I, every time I do grafting or if I do pruning, I always sharpen my tools immediately after. They're always kept sharp. This is a, uh, I didn't write this book. I got my name up there, but it's the Bible and that's my own personal book. And as far as Home Orchard, this is uh, Chuck Engels, Pam Geisel, Maxwell no or uh, it, it's a really good, it's got four color pictures. It tells you anything that you need to know or everything about home orchard from planting to site selection. Anyhow, it, 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 it was very important. Uh, I think it's an excellent book and you can get this, the Master Gardeners ha have these available. Okay, thank you so much, Dennis. Folks, this slide shows um, a survey link that you can go to um, to give us um, some information about you. This helps us to improve our classes. We will do a follow-up survey for those that um, registered, and that really just helps us to know what impacts our classes are having. So are you guys actually, are you actually uh, grafting because you took this class with Dennis? 
Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm gonna pass this over to John for some questions and answers. I know there's lots of questions in chat. Uh, the first question is from uh, Lynn. Uh, can we do graphs, uh, figs, pomegranates, and guava with multiple varieties? I'm sorry, I can't answer that because I really, I'm going to say if you're doing, what was it, guava, and what else was it? Uh, figs, pomegranates, and guava. Well, you, you, in other words, figs can be grafted, different types of figs can be grafted together. I'm going to guess the same with guava. I'm, I'm not sure that you can do a fig on a guava tree, though. But yes, you can do multiple varieties of figs on a fig tree. Uh, the next one is from Eve. Uh, can we graph citrus to citrus? Oh, yes, certainly. Actually, actually, in California right now, it's illegal because of their, there's a, they've got a, a, a problem with uh, citrus. And it's, it's, you're not supposed to do grafting. But yes, you different types of citrus, uh, whether it's an orange or lemon or lime or uh, even grapefruit, there's a variety that can be, you can, you can cross graft. Okay, yeah, and the next question actually was from Don was, uh, can you do orange with a grapefruit and tangerine and lime? So I think you just answered that question. Yes. All of these are. Uh, capable of being uh, grafted on one tree. Uh, Cindy, can you please provide the links, okay, for the products that you recommended? Um, I think that was referring to your tools of the uh, uh, grafting tools. Uh, uh, grafting tools. It, it, uh, actually, a few, it, uh, most, especially in the foothills here, there are um, stores that deal with uh, orchard supplies. So you can get like your, your uh, uh, knives and uh, different types of uh, uh, tapes from them. Uh, that uh, Doc Farwell's product uh, is not being handled locally anymore. It has to come out of uh, Amazon. Right, and as you stated uh, earlier that, I know when I went online uh, just last week, uh, I think it was a, a 32 ounce container of uh, Doc Farwell's, uh, which is, uh, four lifetimes of, uh, of drafting wax. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need to tr you need to uh, spread it out between multiple people if you're going to buy it. Another another problem is this time of year they won't ship it if it's going to be freezing. Got it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Clint uh, was asking about uh, drafting a plum to a nectarine. Yes, yeah, pit to pit. Pit to pit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that plums, pluots, well, you know, a, 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 a pluots across right there, R really. <laughs> so yeah, pl a pluot is an apricot and a plum. So yes, you can. Right, and um, I know uh, last year, uh, you and I, we grafted onto my plum tree uh, pluots and uh, prune plums, and uh, and both of them uh, uh, took this year, and I took some of scions from those new growth, and uh, and made uh, some more uh, grafts onto my trees. So um, it it worked well on my tree. Um, Diane, does chance of rain make a difference in when to graft? Uh, the, the, I, I graft when it's dry only because I, I don't, I need to put a sealer around where the grafting site is. Uh, and if it's raining and it's wet, the grafting site's not going to be waterproof uh, as you try to put whatever it is as a sealer down. So I would say I would try to graft just prior to rain uh, or when it's dry enough to where the sealer is going to hold. But as far as uh, once the sealer is dried, it can rain and won't hurt a thing. Uh, uh, Kelly wanted to know, uh, can we graft rootstock? You want to graft to what rootstock? A uh, grapefruit scion to an orange rootstock. Well, you can graft an orange to the rootstock. I don't know why you want to graft the rootstock to rootstock. In other words, you make a scion from an orange tree 
to a, uh, a grapefruit tree or vice versa, that's fine. But as far as the, you don't necessarily have to graft the rootstock itself. Now, if you want to use rootstock, you can collect rootstock. If you look at the bottom of your trees, uh, especially in uh, probably around October, you'll see a lot of times there's, there's rootstock growing up next to the tree. It's just it's coming up uh, voluntary. You can go in there and cut that off. There, you, there'll, there'll be a hair uh, roots in that. Pull them back, put them into gallon containers, let them grow for a season, and then you can go and, and cut the top off of that and do a graft right to that root stock, and there's your new tree. Uh, this next question is um, from Clint. I have a mature fig tree and want to graft the old to the young. Is this advisable? He wants to graft an old fig tree to a young one. Well, if you just take second year old wood off that old tree, make it about a foot and a half long, stick it in the ground, it'll grow all by itself and there's your new tree. <laughs> right. Yeah, they uh, they root on their own pretty well. Yeah, you don't you don't have to you don't have to graft it. You just stick it in the ground, it grows like a grape. Okay. Um from Kelly would a good wrap of parafilm work in face of a wound sealer? Yeah, as long as you don't get it too hot. You don't want to you don't want to damage that site as far as if it's if it's just warm enough to where it barely goes into place, fine. If it's hot, you may you may burn the uh, uh, the site itself. Can you use Doc Farwell's product on all graphs instead of a yeah, yes, certainly. Yeah, it's a it's a latex sealer is all it is. Okay. Uh, from Karen, uh, would uh, chip or tea budding work best for avocado trees since they don't lose their leaves? Yeah, you could. In other words, yes, you could. You could do it as a tea graft, or you could do it as a. As, it would be a bud graft. You, in other, in other words, you're taking just cut part of that leaf back cut out the, the uh, site as far as the uh, bud and then regraft it. Just, yes, it would definitely be a, a, uh, a bud graft, exactly how you would do it. Okay. Um, Ronald uh, is asking, are some techniques only suitable for when the tree is dormant versus when it has leaked out already? Well, one nice thing about grafting right now is that it's, it's still cool out. And you're, you're, if you're doing a cleft graft or a whip graft, uh, those grafts have time to mature enough to where they, they will withstand the summer heat. Uh, when you do these other types of graft later in the early summer, uh, you better do it more on the shady side of the tree so they don't wind up uh, getting fried from the 100 degree temperatures. Georgia is asking on the tea and chip budding, does it matter where on the host you put the bud? Does it matter if you choose the same place as the host bud or should you avoid a bud spot on the host tree? No, you can you can put it anywhere, and I like to put it further back, closer to the trunk, only because it'll be more shaded, and as it grows out, you'll have a full limb. If you put it on the outside of an existing limb, you're probably going to wind up pruning it off when you're pruning the tree the next year without even realizing it. And Paul is asking, what is the white coating on the trunks of the trees? I I paint my uh, trees twice a, twice a season. Uh, I like to come up at least up into the to the bottom limbs of the tree, and it's using a 50% latex white latex interior paint, 50% water. You can buy the cheapest junk paint you can find. So you're, what you're doing is you're doing is creating a white wash, and it's using a 50% interior latex and water and you can just you can paint it on with a brush or you can spray it on i like to do it 
uh, in the uh, just before it'll be later uh, when the trees dry out good probably uh, like a, like in April or May and then again I do it just before winter uh, it, it, what it'll do it it'll keep you from having uh, problems with uh, especially things like sap suckers it it slows them down if you don't have paint on there sap suckers usually drill all kinds of holes in your tree and, and this will help stop that also stop some of your uh, uh, other evasive pest okay. and it keeps it from sun burning also it, it, it reflects the heat um marie is asking do you eventually need to take the tape off after the graft is taken to avoid girdling the tree or vine yes that's a good question i should have mentioned that what i do is like if i'm doing grafting right now then early this summer, I go in with my, my, my knife and I cut just the very bottom portion of the tape. Just cut okay. through the portion and, and do not peel it off. Just take and cut just the bottom. As it, as the tree starts to grow, it will open up and, the, and the, the tape will come off by itself. And again, that's another reason why I mentioned if you're using electrical tape that you only go a, a quarter turn with a sticky side down, and then you reverse the tape and you do sticky side out for the rest of it. If you got sticky side down, even if you cut it through from the bottom, it doesn't release good and it will probably um, tear some of the bark off as it, as it expands. Okay, and uh, Paru is asking how to graph a low quat. I'm going to jump in really quick and just ask all of the participants to please mute yourself. That's the, uh, the button in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Thank you. Uh, the okay, question, repeat the, repeat the yeah, question. The question was how to graft a low quat. Well, I've never done a low quat, but I'm going to say you could probably do any of these types of graphs, any of them. In other words, it could be a, it could be a bud or it could be a... a uh, a, a cleft graft, any any of those graphs would work. These are all new questions that have come in while I was going through these. Um, could you could the sucker growing from the rootstock be used for grafting? Yes. Yeah, the suckers. This we're talking about. You're talking about suckers at the base of the tree. I believe so. It wasn't. Yeah, good. that that would be. That would be root stock right there. Again, if you go in and you and open, clean it up around where those are coming out and then cut them off in the ground far enough to where it leaves a few hair roots, you can take and plant that in gallon containers, let them grow for a season. What I do is I take the whole container and all, put it right in the ground, let it grow for one season, and then I can cut that off about four inches above the ground level and then do a graft right to that. That becomes rootstock and you graft whatever variety you want on top of it. Ron is asking, uh, where can you get scion wood during the pandemic? Is there something uh, similar to the clonal citrus protection program, but for other trees uh, like apples? Yeah. I would say if you've got a neighbor that's got apple trees and are apples that you like, ask them if you can just take a couple of cuttings off of it. You know, you're not damaging the tree. You're only taking a, a, a piece about maybe anywhere from a foot to 18 inches. Uh, that's, that's the easy way. And if you're going along a highway and you see an orchard with some, some uh, uh, trees, probably if you're not damaging the orchard, you're probably not gonna hurt anything by taking a piece of wood off of it that's uh, you know 18 inches long. We're talking about something about the size of a pencil. It's not really a, a major limb. Nor, and I would, I would say they, a lot of times we have scion exchanges with our master gardener group here. This year we couldn't do it because of the pandemic. We weren't allowed to get together, but normally we do have scion exchange uh, here in Amador County uh, at, in our February Grafting class. How long does it take the sealer to dry? Usually about five five minutes, uh, and if it's warm out, probably less than that. But five or ten minutes at the absolute most. 
I might mention, and I, I always go back after about 10 minutes and recheck it to make sure the seal covered it totally. Uh, and if it didn't, then just add a little bit more to it. Okay. Uh, when is a good time to graft pit trees? Graft fig trees? Pit, P-I-T. Like apricots and... Oh, I, 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 would, I would graft them right now. In my area, as long as the buds are, are, are swelling, they can graft it right now. It's just fine. Okay, and this one isn't really about grafting, but my apricot tree bleeds a lot. What should I do? Uh, make, I make sure that you're doing, uh, you, you need to put uh, oil and uh, dormant spray. You need to dormant spray it uh, for sure. And I do do Two dormant sprays, usually right around Christmas area, maybe a couple of weeks later, twice. Uh, it's a canker of some type you probably have in there. Um, if I could interrupt just a little bit, John and Dennis, let's take one more question and then we'll deal with the rest via contact sheets. Okay, that sounds great. Um, this one is uh, similar to the last question. Uh, what is a good time to graft? loquat and persimmon trees? Uh, again, uh, depending on the type of graft, you, you, I would say that you'd probably do it right now because that's gonna give them a chance to uh, mature as the weather warms up rather than trying to do it when it's really hot out already. Uh, I, would, I would do it now. Okay. Okay, well, Dennis and John. Yes. Thank you so much for all of your incredible information today. Um, and thanks to all of our participants for being so patient and um, working with us through this presentation. Um, we will be posting the presentation and a recap of the questions and answers on our website later this week. But thank you once again for, for participating today. We'll talk to you soon.